Let's look at how to solve dilution and neutralization problems that you might see either in the lab or on tests. We're using the homogeneity of solutions to solve stoichiometry problems. We know that every milliliter of a solution is exactly like every other milliliter and that's why we can do these problems. Dilution relies on the fact that when we dilute a stock solution, all the millimoles of solute in the stock solution will then go into and appear in the dilute. That means that the volume times the molarity of the dilute equals the volume times molarity of the concentrated. Neutralization relies on the fact that at the equivalence point, all the milliequivalents of acid are neutralized by an identical number of milliequivalents of the base. So let's look at our first example. How many milliliters of 12 molar hydrochloric acid solution? And that's a standard solution that you get in, in one of these bottles from the manufacturer. How many milliliters are needed to make 600 milliliters of 0 0.150 molar hydrochloric acid. We start with the equation that we saw just a moment ago. The volume of the concentrated times its molarity is equal to the volume of the dilute times its molarity. That means that we can algebraically solve for the volume of concentrated we need by dividing the product of volume and molarity of the dilute by the molarity of the concentrated. If we plug in the numbers in units, we see that in this case it's 600 milliliters times 0 0.150 molar divided by 12.0 molar. We're not going to need very much of the concentrated solution to make this dilution. And when we do this, the calculator tells us the answer is 7.50 milliliters. Dilution problem 2. What molarity of sodium chloride would be produced by diluting 125 milliliters of 2.5 molar sodium chloride to 750 milliliters? Once more we see that the volume of the concentrated times its molarity is equal to the volume of dilute times its molarity because the millimoles coming out of the concentrated all have to appear in the dilute. We solve now for the molarity of the dilute solution of NaCl, and we see the product of volume and molarity of the concentrated divided by the volume of the dilute. We plug in numbers in units, and we see 125 milliliters is the volume of the concentrated, and 2.5 molar is the concentration of the concentrated. We divide by 750 milliliters, which is the ultimate volume of the dilute, and doing that we get 0 0.417 moles per liter. Now we'll move to the neutralization type problems. Our third example says that 27.5 milliliters of 0 0.0150 molar sodium hydroxide would neutralize what volume of 0 0.0623 molar hydrochloric acid. So the acid is more concentrated than the base. So probably not neutralize as many as 27 milliliters when we neutralize the acid. Now in this reaction, of course, it's NaOH and HCl we know that one mole of acid will react with one mole of base, one-to-one -one ratio of acid to base stoichiometry, in which case we don't have to take the equivalents into consideration. One mole is one equivalent. Now we see, of course, that the volume times the molarity of the acid is equal to the volume times the molarity of the base, because at the equivalence point, the millimoles of acid and base are the same. We then are going to divide by the molarity of the acid to get the algebraic equivalence. Volume of acid equals volume of base times its molarity divided by the molarity of the acid. 
We can then plug in numbers and units and we see 27.5 milliliters is multiplied by 0 0.0150 molar. There's your um, concentrated solution uh, of, uh, of sodium hydroxide. Actually, it's kind of dilute. And how much will it neutralize of the 0 0.0623 molar? 6.62 milliliters. Our final problem is a neutralization that asks what the molarity of sodium hydroxide is if 35.42 milliliters reacts with 48.62 milliliters of 0 0.250 molar hydrochloric acid. This is very much like what you would do in the lab when you've got some uh, a need to standardize sodium hydroxide against a known molarity of HCl. Again, we've got the volume times the molarity of the acid equals the volume times the molarity of the base at the equivalence point. And if we solve for the molarity of the base, we see that we multiply the volume and molarity of the acid and divide by the volume of the base. We then plug in the numbers in units, 48.62 times 0.250 molar of the acid we divide by the 35.42 milliliters of the base and we get 0.343 molar. That's reasonable because we didn't need quite as much base as we had of acid. Therefore, the molarity of the base ought to be greater than that of the acid.